call me outdated, but Counter-Strike is still at the top of my all-time favorite games ever. Late night at the dorm alone, playing up until 3am with full volume on, yes, that is my style, today was supposed to be no different. I turned on my MacBook Pro, the glossy screen made a clear reflection of my long, narrow room. The dorm rooms were made for just one person, so <laughs> I always was alone. My laptop popped up on my desk at the end of the room at the opposite door. It was almost too routine. After a long, boring day of classes, I get back to my room at approximately 10 p.m. I go on Facebook, Twitter, 9gag, up until I've surfed every nook and cranny of the net. Then, bored as fuck, I'd open the Counter-Strike and go firing deep into the night. But tonight, while surfing, a friend uh, suddenly messaged me on Facebook. Hey dude, you should totally come check out this Counter-Strike map. Download link. Kevin sent a message. As he was a CS addict just like me, I opened up the link. The map was called DE underscore darkness with my 10 megabyte per second internet. The map downloaded in a flash, and excited, I immediately opened up Counter-Strike to try out this sick new map. I set it up to play a good old-fashioned 5v5 affair. The map was living up to his name, had many dark areas set late at night. Only pale blue shades of the night sky and a few lampposts gave the light to the area. Stone walls lined each corridor filled with long green vines. Dark hallways and tunnels snaked at the center of the map. Around it was an elevated area, perfect for sniping unwary players at the bottom, through seeing holes at the <laughs> in the tunnels. Bridges also kept the map inter interesting, hovering across the width and length of the vicinity. Darkness seemed to have nothing special to it. There were two ways of getting kills on the map. First one, which is what I like to call the pussy way, was camping and sniping in the elevated areas of the map. It was almost too easy as the darkness gave you instant camouflage and you could rack up tons of kills immediately. The next one was... more interesting and was a rather fun part of the map, which was running through the maze of the tunnels at the center. It was perfect for sneak, sneak attacks and point-blank kills. As usual, I racked up more than half my team's kills during the first few rounds, even while switching between the two ways to play. It was after about the first five rounds, I started to notice things. One time, while roaming the map, I started to hear creaking noises. They're nothing like the usual sound effects I would hear in a CS map. Some of the players' footsteps also started to sound different. Instead of the usual thud of military-grade shoes, a metallic clink clank could be heard, even when there's no player that seemed to be in the immediate area. And then, I started to notice an extra player on the map. While staying in the elevated areas, I, a shady figure would appear in the outskirts of the force of the map, which is impossible to get to. Curiously, I zoomed in my crosshairs on the human-like figure, but as soon as I did, it disappeared. The next round, the figure appeared again. This time, he was only a few paces away. I was able to get a better look at him. He wore a brown overcoat, extending to his knees, fully buttoned up, and a matching pair of brown slacks, which completed his outdated fashion statement. The only thing more puzzling than this main character's clothing was the face that rose above it. He had dark, round eyes, and an empty stare that would stare right at the screen. A sinister smile that also accompanied it, but the man didn't seem to have any lips. A gray, faded complexion covered the rest of the mystery man's face. Just like any other popping character I see, I, I fired at the guy, bullet after bullet, aimed straight at him, at his thin, six-foot body that seemed to have no effect. Before I could try any other ways to kill him, another player killed me. Wow, this map is something special after all. An extra character almost impossible to kill, a sense of excitement hit me like fucking never before. Like, it was the first time I got my hands on the game, essentially. I spent pretty much the remaining rounds trying to kill this character, even if it meant lowering my kill death ratio. 
I noticed that the man only appeared in dark spaces and randomly across the map. Many times the man would even toy with me, and when I would try to run at him, he would stand still, but no distance would be made up. Other times, while firing at him, the man would contort and shake rapidly, like thousands of bullets showered his body at once, but one thing remained. I was never able to fully kill him. It must have been another hour or two already, and I was starting to get sleepy. Trying to kill this mystery man was now getting boring, as it was a futile effort. It was great fun while it lasted, so I closed the application, and it was shutting down. Three, two, one, and my MacBook shut off. But something remained on the screen. The same shadowy figure wearing that brown coat was still in the right-hand corner of the my MacBook. Was it glitching now? <laughs> Could it be a simple graphics, uh burning glitch, but then the figure came closer and closer, and then I could clearly tell that this was animated. His gray face, his empty eye sockets, and that sinister smile now occupied most of my screen. But then I realized I was staring at my laptop's reflection right back at me. And that was The Darkness, a Counter-Strike Source, um, creepypasta. Great one. It was alright. I enjoyed it. Um, didn't really have any, uh, things wrong with it, except for some of the way stuff was worded, which made it rather awkward to read. However, that ending... That ending was actually pretty damn good. I loved it. I would wish that I was given more information, but hell, the um, what most uh, horror is made up of is the fear of the unknown. I'm like, how many freaking games that are horror related you see after the Xbox 360 came out? Not that many, because they want to make it as detailed as possible, while games like the old Silent Hill made it not so very easy to tell. And I like how this guy kept the blood and the gore out. And he had some decent buildup, especially for a 16 minutes, I'm sorry, six minute story. And to be honest, for a short story about Counter-Strike Source, this exceeded my expectations. Nine out of ten. Good job. The, now, this story was uploaded to the Creepy Pasta Wiki under the tag Haunted Games. The credit goes to Brian Tan, and to you, Brian Tan, great job on creating a great, decent pasta. And you didn't make my face explode. Have a good night, everyone.